Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and we have something very special to try today and very unusual I should add. Uh, the puzzle on screen has been cooked up by no less than 14 of the fantastic soul setters that we have over on our Discord server. Um, literally, apparently they all get together, they give themselves 10 minutes each to add an extra rule to the puzzle uh, and the result is this one. And some of the setters involved in this are names that you'll all recognise. They've appe appeared on the channel many times before. So this is really a collaboration of complete setting geniuses. Um, and the testing reports say that, that what they've managed to create is a beautiful, beautiful Sudoku puzzle. So we're in for an absolute treat. Now, I'll read out the names of all those involved in creating it. It's going to be difficult. I think I'm just going to refer to them as the geniuses after this. Um, but it's Ben. It's Bataku, it's Clover, Glipperal, Hakisan, Lavaloid, Prasanna Sashadri, Punching Kato, who I think is Priam Bouchan, Reverend, Ricky Cruz, RSP, Shy, Tost Crunch, and Exoned. Um, I think it's Exoned. Is it Exoned? That's how I should say that, or Zoned? I'm not sure, but I think it's Exoned. Um, so it's it it really is a stellar lineup um, and some unusual lengthy rules because obviously if each one of them is adding on a new constraint every ten minutes, we've got quite a lot going on in the puzzle. But I am absolutely. Well, I'm very much looking forward to trying this one. Um, now, the other news, of course, is Reverend's Puzzle Hunt. Reverend, who actually was you know, one of the authors of the puzzle on the screen, um, that came out two or three days ago to the most incredible reception. I mean, we have been astonished at how many of you have tried it, how many of you have got through it. Um, I have another list of names to read out today. So many congratulations to Jonathan Mason, Oliver Sperandio, uh, Tom Morley, Ben Cleary, Hamlin, Parched Mind, Stephen McCallum, uh, Robert Anders, Biggie Badbol, Joel Seligstein, Andreas Meyer. Ha ah, no, this is the one that Mark had to read out the other day. I will read this very carefully. Harib Al Sack. Make of that what you will. John Ch John Chiolfi, gosh, I'm such a child. Um, Team Vival Team Vavala, Joshua Chang, Ben Batera, Becky Lovell, and Tom Fisher, and Hannah W. Fantastic solving, all of you. Really, really well done. Um, and if you want to have a go at Reverend's Puzzle Hunt, the way to get it is just become a patron of the channel over on Patreon. And to do that, you just go. Uh, Click that link. I shall try and remember to put a link on the screen right now. Um, now, let's get to the rules of this one. What is going on? We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. I don't know which of them contributed that rule. Um, the grey circle uh, is odd. That's that one, presumably. I think that one's a thermometer. Uh, so the grey circle is odd. The grey square is even. Okay. Digits along the blue line must be between the values at each end of that line. So this big G in the grid, and apparently this puzzle is called the OG Wiggle. I don't know why. Maybe it's something to do with the G. Um, but what we have to do is to put digits at the end of the line, and whatever we put into these two squares, the other digits on the line will have to be between these sort of extremities. So, you know, I would not suggest putting five and six into these squares, because then these cells would all have to equal 5.5. .5. And you ain't going to get very far in solving the puzzle with that. Um, digits along an arrow uh, sum to the value in the associated circle. So that's normal arrow rules. For example, this purple arrow here, we, we add up those three squares. And whatever these sum to, we have to put it in the circle. Um, the two-digit pill should be read as a two-digit number from left to right for these purposes. So that's this one, look. So this sums to a two-digit number, this long arrow here. Um, digits in a cage do not repeat. If a value is given for the cage, the digits sum to that value. So that's normal killer Sudoku rules. Um, digits along a thermometer must increase from the bulb end. There's only one thermometer, it's that one. Um, so that's normal thermometer rules. The orange cell, that must be this one, is greater than the four digits orthogonally adjacent to it. So whatever we put in this square has to be greater than those four squares. And it's 
it's a correct rule today. It's not an everything is Rogan situation. I don't know how many of you have watched the movie, the second movie that I had to do a couple of days ago on the channel. It was brutal. Um, two cells separated by a black dot must have a one to two ratio. There's only one of those, so that Kropke dot is normal. Uh, digits along the marked brown diagonal must not repeat. So that's this diagonal look. You can just about see, hopefully, the brown line. Um, now, originally, in the original version of this, I've been told to say apparently there was an arrow outside the grid here pointing along this diagonal that had a 45 on it. So sort of an, an extra little killer clue that, you know, I suspect that was added very late on because they realised they had a brilliant puzzle and they didn't want to ruin it. Um, because um, a little killer clue pointing down this diagonal, adding it to 45, given that there's already a marked diagonal on which digits cannot repeat, is not adding any information. Um, but this, I mean, this sounds brilliant. It sounds brilliant. And I think what I should probably do as I go through is rank all of the uh, extra all of the extra uh, clues that have been given. So we, we will decide who we think we won't know. They can de they can debate it amongst themselves, but we will d we will try and say which we think was the best constraint that was added, etc. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um, so how do we get cracking? We haven't got very good killer cages to work with. We've got to. I mean, this this has very little constraint on it because yeah I mean the minimum I can make these five cells add up to given they've all got to be different digits and they, these are obviously all on the arrow I could make these add up to 15 or 35 if I if I make them 1 2 3 4 and 5 they'd add up to 15 if I make them 5 6 7 8 9 they add up to 35 and then we're also adding those two squares so they could add up to 17, I suppose. So I suppose what we do know is that this square can't be greater than five. Maybe that is worth noting, two, three, four, five. I mean, can, can it be as little as a sort of teenage digit? I think it can. If, that's, if this is 15 and these were one and two, that would be 18, yeah, okay. So that this is not the place to start. Um, is it the G then? Maybe we have to start with the G. So this this line is telling us that whatever I put in the ends of the line. Oh right, yeah, okay. So I can see that there's a there's a restriction with the G, because this column, in fact, this row as well. But let's look at the column. These digits all have to be different. But they also have to meet the criteria that they must lie between whatever I put in the ends of the G. Yeah, okay, so if I if I try and put a 4, for example, a 4 and a 9 in here, this would break the puzzle. Because I now can't put 5 different digits in here lying between 4 and 9, because between 4 and 9 there's only 5, 6, 7 and 8. There's only 4 different digits. So you can't... It's not a massive restriction, but it does mean you can't put 4, 5, and 6 in the ends of the G. You've got to be putting 1, 2, 3, 7, 8, 9. And obviously if it was a 7, for example, in one of them, you couldn't pair that up with the 3. Or indeed the 2. Um, oh, right. Now, hang on. We've also got, look... A circle here with black arrows coming out of it, both of which are two cells long. So we can't have nine in either of these positions, because then what? how would we fill this square? We'd go nine plus one, for example, would equal ten. Well, we can't write ten in the circle, so we can't have nine in those squares. Oh, they've grown larger as a result of that. It's almost like we've made progress. Um, yeah, OK, I'm going to make them larger still. If I can't have nine in there, I can't have three in there now. Because eight, between three and eight, there are only four different digits. Yeah, that's right. So there's no three in here either. So these are one, two, seven, or eight. And one of them, one of them's high, one of them's low. 
If we make them both low, we will give ourselves a real problem. So, so this, this is a high number. This is at least eight. Yeah, okay, this is at least eight because I must put at least seven into one of those squares and then the other one could be a one. Seven and one would... Oh no, hang on. Hang on, no, no, this is better. This is better than... I can't put seven and one on one side, can I? Oh, that's really clever. So you can't... Yeah, you can't do it. So this... Yeah, so what I was thinking was, if you put seven here, for example, I could. I was thinking, oh, I could just put a one here, and this could be an eight. But the point is, I can't do that, because putting a seven here or here constrains the other side of the G, because I've got to have five distinct digits. So if I put seven here, I have to put one here. And now, how do I make this sum work, given I can't repeat a digit on the diagonal? I've got to put two in here and that adds up to nine. So if I put a seven on either side, this is a nine. And obviously if I put an eight in either of these squares, it'll have to accompany a one. And that will also add up to nine. So the, con the conclusion we've reached slowly is that, oops, is that this square is always nine. Oh, and I've just managed to delete my pencil marks somewhat idiotically. I've got one, two, seven and eight into these squares. But both sides now, yeah, oh, yeah, so now if both sides have to add up to nine, I've got a quadruple. Yes, this is absolutely lovely. Whoever came up with the, well, the combination of the G and this, um, this arrow here is absolutely beautiful. Give yourselves a clap on the back or a pat on the back. Um, so I've got, if I've got a high digit here, I've got a low digit here. Or a low digit here is a high digit here. Ah, and I've got a thermometer. Oh, yes, okay. Well, this can't be eight. Because if, if it's an eight, we have a real problem. Because we're going to put nine there, and then this is going to be ten. And that won't work. So this is definitely not eight. Now, if it's seven, we'll go eight, nine. Oh, and that's not possible because... <laughs> This puzzle's really clever. As, as not, I shouldn't expect any different, but it actually seems incredibly well constructed. Given, given it's not constructed presumably with an overall theme in mind, and every person comes to it a bit fresh and looks at the position of the board and then adds a constraint. This, it's, it's really cool. So you can't put seven here because that would force the, these two digits to be eight and nine. But eight on the G. Is not possible because I can't put nine at either end of the G. So this is not seven. Whoops, it's not seven. So this becomes low, which means this must be high in order to get to nine. So this is a seven or an eight. And this is one side of the G. So the other side of the G swaps parity, if you like, and turn must be a low digit, which means this is a high digit. Still don't know whether, you know, what the boundaries are there. Now, this diagonal, though, I suppose I've got five digits that I sort of know. So the other digits are three, four, five, and six in some order. Um, ah, now this is still thermometer territory down here. So I can't put six there because then this can't be higher than six. And if I put three here, this can't be lower than three. So this has a little bit of a restriction on those two squares. Um, now, I don't know whether I'm meant to focus down here, but I've just seen this square now can't be nine. And that seems important because it's a three cell arrow. So it's got a minimum value of six. So this is six, seven, or eight, almost forming a pair.
Um, well, we know there's a one on one of those squares. Whoa, I don't know what I did there, but I want to put a one into one of the squares because however we make a three cell sum add to six, seven or eight, there's always a one involved. And you can't put, you can't put one on the G. You can't put one on the G because you can't put zero in the end. So that's not one. Now, I've just had a rather cool thought about that. That. Oh, goodness. Right, okay. This puzzle, this puzzle is sensationally clever. This puzzle is sensationally clever. That is absolutely beautiful. I can see an awful lot of things flowing from the mere fact that one sits into one of those two squares. That is beautiful. Whichever one of you or combination came up with this, that is absolutely gorgeous. Now, this, this I think is a Fistemafel trick because I now know well, that there has to be a one in the Fistemafel ring. Where on earth does that go? It can never go in these squares because you can't put a zero as the boundary. So the one in the Fistemafel ring is in one of those two positions, which means that there is only one one in the Fistemafel ring, which means, for example, that that 15 cage has become quite interesting to me. It means there's a what? There's all sort right. But before we get on to this, some of you may be wondering what I am babbling on about. What is the Fistemafel ring? And I know many of you are very familiar with this, but I am going to run through it because we always assume it might be new viewers who are watching the videos. Um, now, let me do some highlighting. I will make those purple. I will make this ring of squares green. How many purple squares have I just highlighted? 16. There's four in each box. How many cells are there in this ring I've highlighted? 16. Now, the purple cells and the green cells in any Sudoku puzzle are absolutely identical. They contain the identical set of digits. And I hope that there are some of you out there who are as gobsmacked by that as I first was when I heard it. It is true. I will explain quickly why why it's true. Um, the way to, I think the simplest way to think about it actually is to, well, let's, let's look at how we define the green cells in the ring in row three. So we're looking at these cells. We could define these cells as the set of digits one to nine, i.e. the complete row of the Sudoku, minus those two dominoes. So I think we'd all agree that that's defining whatever's in these green cells. We're going to say it's all of the digits, one to nine, because that's what we're going to have in the row, minus whatever we find in the blue dominoes. Now let's do the same for row seven. So these squares are exactly equal to the set of digits one to nine, minus those dominoes. What about column, column three? So if I'm going to try and define these cells, I could define that as the set of digits one to nine, i.e. the whole column minus those dominoes. Ditto, column seven. Now, the eagle-eyed among you will realize it's not correct to define the Fistemafel ring, this green ring here, named after the brilliant constructor Fistemafel, who first, I think, brought this to the attention of the world. Um, it's not correct to define the green ring as equal to four sets of the digits one to nine minus the blue dominoes because we'd have double counted these four squares because when I added the row together, I obviously would have counted this square here. But when I added the column in, I would have also counted this square. So the actual technical definition of the green ring is four sets of the digits one to nine minus all of the blue dominoes minus whatever's in that cell, whatever's in that cell, whatever's in that cell, whatever's in that cell. That defines exactly these 16 digits. Now, let's remember that 
but move to defining the purple cells. Now I'm going to def choose to define these purple cells first. So these purple cells could be described as being the set of digits 1 to 9, because that's what I'm going to have in the whole of box 1, minus the blue dominoes in box 1, minus this cell here. This set of purple cells will be the whole set of digits 1 to 9, minus the blue dominoes in box 3, minus this square, etc. In other words, the purple cells in this puzzle are exactly equal to four sets of the digits 1 to 9, i.e. the contents of these four boxes, minus all of the blue dominoes in the puzzle, minus these four squares, i.e. the purple squares can be defined identically to the way we defined the green ring. And that is the trick. So it's not, it's not even uh, the case, well, it, although it is the case, that the purple cells and the green ring add up to the same digit, add up to the same number, they do, but we can go further than that, they actually contain the same set of 16 digits. And this is why I think this is, this, I think that's what uh, this puzzle is all about, because, um, let's come back to it and let me explain why I'm so excited about the ones being locked into these two squares, because now, if we look at our Fistemafel ring, in the context of the four two by twos in the corner, I now know there has to be a one in the Fistemafel ring. There has to be because of the, the logic we've just gone through. I can't put the one on the G except in the, in the end of the G, because if I do, I've got to put a zero at an, at an end of it. So where does this one that must correspond, it must be in the ring. Where does it go? It must be in this domino here. There must be a one in one of those two cells. But if there's a one in one of these two cells, there can't be a second one on the Fistemafel ring. It's impossible. I could put a one here, but then I can't put one there and vice versa. So this is the only one that exists in all of these two by twos. And now we come to the 15 cage and let's ask the question, how is it composed? Well, if it can't contain a one, there's only one way of getting to 15 in four cells. Two, three, four, and six. And that is quite beautiful. There's no five in there, look. Oh, it's gorgeous, yeah, because now that now, what's this square? It can't be two, three, four, or six. So it can't be a three or a four. So it is a five. And it's on the thermometer, so that's a six. Lovely, absolutely lovely. The other thing I noticed about there being a one in one of these cells is what it does to box nine. If there's no one here, and there isn't because there's a one in one of these squares, and there's no one in the two by two because of the Fistemafel trick, then there is a one in one of those cells, which means there's a one in one of these cells. Oh, I thought it was going to go round the grid, but no, it doesn't. Um, I mean, how clever. It's really, it's really beautiful. But now we've got, now we've still got to try and work out what to do next. So the Fistemafel, this one led to this, which led to the 15, which fixed the thermometer. So what's the natural next thing to look at here? Hmm. I still don't think it's this. I think my impression is that these two cells have been left to very late, probably this one as well. I don't think these will be used early in the solve. Oh, I know what it is. It's the 11 cage, isn't it? Oh. Oh, it's, this is just, this is superb. Yeah, okay, it is the 11 cage, and the 11 cage is going to give us the G, because, well, is there a 2 in the 11 cage? The answer to that is that there is. How do we know that? Well, we know there's no 1 in it from Fistemafel logic. 
So if there was no 2 in it, the minimum I could make these three squares add up to would be 12, because I could put 3, 4, and 5 in. 3, 4, and 5 sum to 12. There is a knowledge bomb from cracking the cryptic. So, once I know there's a 2 in there, what does that mean? Well, it begs the question, given I know there's a 2 in there and there's a 2 in there, where does the 2 go in row 7? Well, it can't be in those squares and it can't be in these squares. So it's on this blue line. If it's on the blue line, this square, one of the ends has got to be lower than 2. So it must be this one. So this becomes 1. Oh, I see, that actually tells you everything because now, yeah, now you just use the 9. I was about to say, yeah, in fact, that becomes two because we can't repeat on the diagonal. I forgot that. So there we go. So we actually finish. Yeah, we finish this and we learn that. We learn that seven and one bound the blue G. Some of the sentences I find myself saying on these videos are unusual. Um, five, six here. This can't be a five or a six, look. Four, seven. So these squares, these squares are now fixed and these squares. I mean, I don't know what they are, what in what order they are, but I know they must be the digits between one and seven. And there are only five digits between one and seven. So there's two, three, four, five, and six, but the five is there. So we've got two, three, four, and six into those squares. This can never be a six because this sum could never, you can never make eight with six and double one. You can't, you can't double one in a Sudoku grid. Um, that can't be seven, actually. There's a seven here. Oh, I've got another, I've got another trick. Eight. Eight is in a two by two. Well, that means eight appears in the Fistimafel ring. But, but the seven and the one bound all of these squares. So there's no eight in those. So the eight can only go here. And that's going to fix this cell. This is a gorgeous puzzle. This is a gorgeous puzzle. Now this square can't be four. This is a one, two, three, triple. Um, that's going to do some, oh, the, yeah, that fixes the Kropke dot. The Kropke dot must be four and eight now. Um, that probably does something. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, okay, it locks eight by Sudoku into one of those cells. I would have had no clue that this puzzle had multiple authors. No idea. I would have just said it's a sensationally good puzzle that's been put together by somebody who has an awful lot of ability at constructing Sudoku. Um, now, what do we do next? Five and six are here. So five and six in this box have got, have got to be in those two squares. So these two squares are seven and nine to complete the box which is interesting. This 7 and 9, plonk a 7 and a 9 down there. Oh, that's this is lovely as well, isn't it? 7s and 9s. 7s and 9s. I can't put 7s and 9s in, in the Fistimafel ring. So this 7 and 9 here, rule out 7 and 9 from the yellow squares, you can't put 7 and 9 in the Fistimafel ring, so that rule out those squares. So these squares are a 7-9 pair. And presume, and that must work the same way there. These are a 7-9 pair. So where, okay, yeah. So where do I put 8 in row 7 of the grid? It's got to go here. And that must be a 1. It's got to go here because I cannot put it on the, on the blue line. So these squares now are 2, 3, four and six exactly the same as these um, okay this is good 
but it's still not solved. This six fixes the six and the five at the top. Look, six and five go into the puzzle. This doesn't begin with a five anymore. These squares are, yeah, we, we, well, we don't know what they are, but we know approximately what they are. They've got to be from these options. So there's definitely a five and a six in these three squares. And this, ah, in fact, this square is not six. So six is in one of those two positions. We've got the W killer cage, which is not got a total on it. Oh, the six. Yeah, this this might be the point that this was added to the puzzle. Because, um, look, this six scans across there, removes those. Now, this square is odd. Now, six is even, so six must go there. Right, we should stay with six, I think. What's this six situation doing? It's... Or is it just running out of legs immediately? Um... I don't know. I don't think that really has done anything. This square has to be odd and can't be one, seven or nine. So that is three or five and it can't be five. Oh, right. Golly, that's given. That's a three. That's a four. Therefore, this is a three to complete the diagonal. We get a two, four pair at the bottom. These two squares now have got to be two and five. Therefore, this isn't a two. This isn't a three by Sudoku. Look, because of the three there. This is, ah, ah, hang on. This square's become restricted, very restricted. This has to be a low total. That's interesting. We might come back to this, I think. Um, I'm just wondering, we need seven, eight, and nine for those positions, and this can't be nine. Now, these squares on the blue line, this can't be three, four, six. I feel like I'm missing something simple here. Maybe it is this line. Let's come back to the red arrow then. Um, So, what's the minimum now? We can maybe I have to use that one as well, do I? I'm not sure is the answer. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not even sure how to get a handle on this particularly. Maybe I've just got to Is there something I should be appreciating about this structure? That can't be a two or a six. Actually, this one is restricted. That can only be three or four. That can't be a two. Hmm. Okay, let's have a look at this. So these, let's try and make these five squares as small as we can. See, this is really tricky. You can't put one and two into these uh, yellow squares because if you do, this square has no option. So actually, the minimum value you can put into these squares, if you can't use one and two, one, three, four, one, three, four, five, six is already so, so this is a two. That's the point, isn't it? This is a two because you can't keep these down. Um, because if I try and make these, for example, one, three, four, five, six, one, three, four, five, six adds to 19 and you've still got two digits to add in, which must be, well, th actually this square's got to be at least a three because it must be higher than one and it must be higher than two. So that square's got a minimum value of three. So this red arrow, I think, means that this square is a two. Now that might be helpful. 
Oh yeah, look, that is helpful. That fixes this one, which is going to fix this diagonal. So we go one, three, two. There's no two into those squares now. No two here. This must be a two, therefore. This even digit now is a bit more restricted. It's now four, six, or eight. One, three. Um... Is this done the path we finished it now? Oh these hang on, I need to put an eight in this column. That's gotta be that's gotta be a one eight pair at the bottom. Um five six. No, okay, so let's come back to this. So this is this is now twenty seven or twenty eight. So what's the minimum I can put into these cells? This is really challenging, to be honest, because I can't put one, three, four, five, six onto the onto the yellow squares because then this square will have no value at all. So the minimum I can put in here is going to be what if I make this six, one, three, four. One, three, four, five. I can't use seven. One, three, four. And if I've made this six, good Lord, if I've made this six, let's look at this. If I make this six to try and give myself an absolute chance of keeping this down, one, three, four, five means this square has to be eight. So I've got to go one, three, four. One three four five nine. What on earth is that? One three four five nine is twenty twenty two. One three four five nine. Yes, yeah, twenty two. And these two ah, and these two have to both be yeah. Okay, if I'm going to keep this down to twenty eight, which is the best I'll do, those two have to be threes then. So this is, I think, one three four five nine on this diagonal. Let's just let's just double check this. What if I try and do anything else but make this a six? If I try, yeah, it's not going to work. I mean, if I try and make that a four, I've lost even more latitude. I've then got to go one three five. One three five. If I go six, I've still got to go nine, and I'm just going to blow the total. It just doesn't work. So this square, this square is six, and that's the best I can do. It's the only way I can keep these down to being threes. And the rest of this column, then, that means this is a six by Sudoku. This square here now. Well, I need the four on the arrow, so this square is an eight. And these squares here are one, three, five, um, and nine, and four. That's the digit I've not used. Okay. We can't put threes into those squares. We can't put three here. So, oh, I was about to say, yeah, in fact, I can. Where does three go in the column? can't go there so three goes here that becomes a five it doesn't seem to do anything but it was a moment of euphoria those can't be nines um, that can't be a five can't quite see how to Finish this off. Two six here means this is a four. So there's a four in one of those three squares. It's very unlikely to be here because this square needs to be greater than all of those squares. The 11 cage now. Oh, the 11 cage is fixed. Oh, thank goodness for that. I was thinking maybe oh, that's been there for a while, but I don't think it has. The 11 cage. We know it's got a two in it, no one in it. Now it's not got a four in it anymore. So the only way this will work is with two, three, and six. Yeah, before it could have been two, four, and five. And I don't think that was, it may have been disambiguatable some other way, but 
That means there's a 6 in here by Sudoku. If it was disambiguatable, my apologies. Um, this squares a 5 by Sudoku. Oh, bobbins, that's not... I thought that was just going to tidy up the rest of the puzzle. No such luck. Um, so these squares here are 2, 5 and 6. And that one can't be 2. This 8 is obviously giving us an 8 and a 1. Which is... It's not really tidying up the puzzle, is it? This 3, though, is helpful with the 2, 3 over there. So that gives us a 3 and a 2. Still doesn't clear up the 2 and the 5. But the 2 does clear up the 2 and the 4, which clears up the 4 and the 8. That means... That can't be a 6, look because of this 6 here. We know that, oh, sorry, I know that's 28, don't I? Because I have to make that work. So this square is not 8. 8 must be here by Sudoku, good. 8's here by Sudoku. This is not 3. Even now, I suppose it's not that surprising that it's still holding out, because if I, I haven't used this clue at all. So presumably as they were setting it, um, they were still finding at this point that it was resisting. 1479 into these squares, look. So this can only be 1, 4 or 7. This has got to be 1, 4, 7 or 9. I still haven't used the W uh, killer cage either, which is a bit disconcerting. This column needs 1, 4, 7 and 9. That's got to be a 7 or a 9. Which is an R. Uh, OK, so that gives me a 7, 9 pair in column 4, which means that square gets reduced. This square's a 1 or a 4. This square's not 5. Five's definitely in here. So this is a 1 or a 4. You know, still, I'm still not getting it. Sorry. Ah, but I can get the, this square. This square must be a 5 by Sudoku. So this is 1, 4, 7. This is 1, 4 or 7 as well. So I still not use this clue. Or this clue. So let's have a look at this column, I think. I could be missing something else that I've not looked at, but uh, you'll have to forgive me if so. Three, there are a lot of rules in this puzzle. Three, four, seven, and nine. Ah, okay, this can't be four. Or three, actually. Oh, so there's a three, four pair there, look. Oh, that's lovely, that's gonna resolve. Yeah, this, this clue is the next one we need to look at. Because this column needs three, four, seven, and nine. You can't put three and four in here because we know this is five or six. So the three and the four can only live in these two squares. And you can see from the three here, we therefore must go three, four. This square therefore is seven or nine. Four now fixes the six over there, which gives us, and the three fixes the four over here which fixes that. That's why the W pentomino is here. Look, the four sees the one via the medium of not repeating a digit in a killer cage. So that's lovely. That gives us a one here. I've realized I've not been keeping tabs of which clues I've thought are beautiful. Um, almost all of them, to be honest. It's been, it's been a beautiful puzzle, this. Uh, now, don't stop now, though. Keep going. This one is fixing the four at the bottom. Those two clues get tidied up a little. This square presumably is quite restricted because it can't be one, two, three, four, or five, or six, or I hope it can be something. It's got to be seven. <laughs> it's the only option that fits. Eight and nine are also ruled out. This seven is lovely. That gives us the seven and the nine. These squares are a one, two pair, which we can fill in. This one gives us the four here, the five here, the one here, gives us the six here. 
that's got to be a 5 by Sudoku. Those two squares have got to be 5 and 9, we can do them, good. This square over here has got to be something. I realise that's not terribly descriptive, but it's true. Those are 2 and 5. This 4 fixes the 7, which gives us the 1, the 9, the 7. 9, the 4, nearly made a mistake. The 9, the 7. The 7, the 9. Still need a 1 over there. Oh, lovely. And we get a 7-9 deadly pattern resolved by the orange the orange square. That's lovely. Absolutely lovely. Yeah, because we've got to make sure this is greater than all its orthogonal neighbours. So if we were to put 7 into it, that would flip to being a 9, breaking the puzzle. We mustn't have everything rogan in this one. So 9s go in there, 7s go in there. That is what I think I would submit, and that's correct. That's brilliant. That is brilliant. First class, guys. And girls, I really enjoyed it. Just absolutely superb. Um, yeah, now this was tricky. The red arrow was tricky, but very clever. There may have been a better way of me resolving that. I love the start. I love the work this G did was extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. And the fact that, you know, the whole conceit around the G was presumably put in by somebody different to whoever did this arrow and whoever did this arrow or these arrows maybe some they were different people who did these arrows i don't know but it's it's magnificent absolutely magnificent i, I loved it i hope you guys enjoyed it even a scintilla as much as i did uh, let me know in the comments of course i do read them and i do appreciate them uh, thanks so much for watching and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic